This is the story of a challenge. A challenge that we had taken up in the first two months of moving to London. In the past year, we had trekked several miles across Asia. But this was going to be our single longest trek that we had ever embarked upon. We had heard so much about the Scottish Highlands and its majestic lakes, which the Scottish refer to as lochs. And so we challenged ourselves to trek the West Highland Way that stretches along the eastern shore of the mighty Loch Lomond, 155 kilometers, 96 miles route. We were to trek this length in a week while camping along lock shores and open moorlands, whilst being self-reliant and self-sufficient. But do things ever go according to plan? Thirty-seven. Our bus is at 10.30. We have a train to catch and that alone is 45 minutes so we're running late. I don't want to miss the bus. It was our first time visiting Scotland. We slept through most of the journey, but in the early hours of dawn, found ourselves in the midst of green rolling pastures and faintly lit skies. We could only imagine what views were in store for us in the coming days. So we have finally reached the town of Milgai. It was about half an hour from Glasgow by train and uh, we started from last night in London it's been quite a trek to just begin the trek but uh, yeah we are all set now it's a nice warm day toasty much needed especially when uh, you're hiking in the Scottish weather. It's mostly been a flat path and we are on our way to Dry Men, which is about 9 miles from here and I think we'll probably uh, pitch our tent there and camp tonight. But it's been a good day. The sun is out, the skies are clear. So we've been quite lucky but I don't want to jinx it. Uh, the weather app showed that it's going to be raining for the next couple of days so we're just going to make haste while the sun shines.
Thank you. Turns out I don't know how to open the gate. <laughs> The first day on our hike was a beautiful beginning to this journey. There's a certain stillness and calm in the highlands that cannot be described in words. Something that we as city dwellers rarely experience. Out here everything feels still as if time has stopped. We learn to live in the very moment, observing the slightest of sounds a movement around us the shuffling of our feet against the ground underneath the wind on our cheeks the sounds of the birds chirping while we feel every stroke of the sun on our skin it's like out here all our senses come to life and how often do we stop and just embrace the present I think this is a spot for lunch. that making meals on this hike was something that i was looking forward to the most and i don't know it just gives me so much joy This is a gourmet meal for me. This is better than any five star. Seriously. <laughs> Lunch with a view. What more can you ask for? tired knees hurt dead dead so it's not too difficult to hike up until now but um it's our bags and we have carried stuff that's required for the next one week so that means food supplies tent the gas stuff like everything everything that we need to be self reliant and to survive so um, yeah i think arjun's got around how many kilos of uh, weight are you carrying 16 or 17 that's quite a bit and i'm carrying about 12 to 13 so yeah we're just going to rest for a bit before we head to dry men i think it's about 5 miles still from here quite a bit to go but uh, it's the views the views you just just can't complain when you have such amazing views What 
Pasta. Pasta? Yeah. Oil, pasta, andro. Rodes. Pasta. Just boiling some water for tea. I'm just gonna like use some of these tea bags, and I've even got some oat sachets. Where are they? Oh, here they are. So yeah, like got these oat sachets, which are so useful, especially when you're hiking, because they're already like pre-measured. So one for each of us. The second day on our trek was simply magical. We felt like two lost souls in the middle of nowhere, like two minuscule beings in this unending vastness. Nature has its way of humbling and grounding us and letting us know that we are just a tiny speck in the universe. We hiked for miles along the shores of Loch Lomond and witnessed its breathtaking beauty that we had heard so much about.
the day was physically challenging. We trekked over 18 kilometers in search of a campsite and finally pitched our tent right before nightfall, hoping to get the rest we needed to set off again the following day. Last night was hard, so we pitched our tent right next to the lake, Loch Lomond, and uh, there were a lot of midges, which are these insects that bite you just like mosquitoes. In fact, they are all stuck here right outside our tent waiting to bite us, and it was raining, it was cold. Thank God for our sleeping bags. Yeah, now we're just packing up. Pitching the tent looks really glamorous, especially when you're doing it like, you know, by a lake and stuff. And of course it's nice, but you know, when you're really tired, especially after a day of hike or even in the morning when you have to wake up really early and start the next day hiking, it is a lot of effort to pack and unpack and all of that in our hiking bags, making sure everything is snug and fit. That's something that I'm not the biggest fan of. It's full packing and unpacking and compressing everything like this is just one sleeping bag everything like compressed you got to make sure the air is out can you see that the struggle is real and this is how we waterproof our bags and off we go again. On this day, the skies unleashed their wrath upon us, but we kept going as far as our feet could take us. By midday, we also lost our way, and it took us over an hour to just get back onto the main track. We barely filmed while it was raining. We were trying our best to stay motivated to continue as much as we could. And we barely stopped to rest because that would mean having to deal with the mitches. I'm so tired. The bag's too heavy. I feel like giving up. Yeah, it's too heavy. After what felt like an eternity, a 22 kilometer stretch on a single day, we made the most difficult decision to quit. Our bags completely weighed us down. The rains and the midges made it even harder. And we were just emotionally exhausted to pitch our tent again that night and gather whatever energy that was left of us to simply feed ourselves. But then, something incredibly surreal happened. In the desperate quest for a place to pitch camp, we stumbled upon a little church in a quaint village called Inversnide. A church that was converted into a bistro and bunkhouse. Here we met Steve and Rob, two of the most kind-hearted Scottish boys who saw that we were two weary travellers and instantly made us feel at home. We were served the most delicious vegan food. And as vegans, this was such an unexpected treat in the middle of a faraway town in Scotland. I mean, who would have expected this turn of events? Something that honestly felt nothing short of a dream. Not just that, Rob and Steve even offered a spare camper van to sleep in that night. <laughs> Who would have thought that our trek would end on this note? In a caravan. And look at the views. In hindsight, 
we would probably not have been able to pitch our tent in such an exhausted state the following day with a heavy heart we bid goodbye to our new friends and to an adventure that taught us so many lessons we should have packed lighter and probably prepared a little bit more before we got so ambitious with this hike but we learned something deeper we often hike only to reach a destination but the destination is just the final bit it's about the journey the ups and downs the learnings the people we meet the paths we cross and unforgettable moments like this that make a hike or just life more special and worthwhile